Silver is likely to go to $30 an ounce in just 30 days. And here are my five reasons why. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. I really appreciate it. And yes, I'm going to give you my reasons for my price prediction with the spot price of silver. <laughs> $30 an ounce. That's what I think is going to happen within 30 days. Now, I'm not going to talk about the availability of physical silver. I know a lot of you leave comments saying, Yankee, I don't care what the price does. I can't get a hold of it. And scarcity is a big issue. I'm not, I'm not going to cover that here, but I am going to talk about why I think we're going to hit $30 an ounce in just 30 days. Before I jump in, just got to give the disclaimer, guys, this is primarily for fun. I'm not a professional financial advisor. I don't have a crystal ball. I just think for a variety of reasons, this is likely. The first three reasons are somewhat fundamental and ongoing, but I think the last two will amplify and, and make it more likely to see such a rise in the spot price of silver. The first reason is interest rates. <laughs> they are at zero and I think they're going lower. And guys, this cheap money, this monetary immorality, if you will, the abandonment of an immutable law of money is at the root of why I believe the dollar is doomed ultimately. Guys, for, for thousands of years, the concept of the time value of money has been a, a, a pillar of economic truth. It goes back millennia. It, have you heard of the story in the Bible called the parable of the talents? Now, I, just, just just follow me here for a minute, okay? Jesus told a parable about this, uh, about his return to earth, and it basically was about a boss who was going on a big uh, business trip, and before he left, he gave various amounts of money to people, his employees. Uh, they were called talents back then, and uh, they were supposed to take good care of it. Well, when he got back, he expected to get a return on investment, right? So he brought the first you know, two employees in and they nailed it, okay? They, they essentially doubled their boss's money. But the third guy blew it. He literally stuck the money the boss had given him, the capital, if you will, in a hole in the ground and just then dug it back up and gave it back to his boss. And the boss was like, what's the deal, dude? <laughs> and of course, the employee gave some lame excuse. He was afraid or whatever. The boss said to him, you knucklehead, you could have at least put the money in the bank and gotten me interest. Not today, Jesus. There is no return on investment when you stick your money in the bank. Okay, the whole time value of money, one of the... One of the most simplest yet fundamental laws has just been obliterated throughout the world. Now, I know some of you out there are saying, Yankee, that, that's all fine and good, but th th this is the almighty dollar, right? <laughs> this is the world's primary reserve currency. It can't happen. Well, I disagree. It can, and it has to all other fiat world reserve currencies in history. And it's going to happen to ours. Oh, but Yankee, you know, uh, all the other fiat currencies are worse, right? You know, it, what, what does Rick Rule uh, say? He's the CEO of Sprott. He calls it the, uh, the, 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 the prettiest mare in the slaughterhouse. <laughs> Come on, Yankee, what do you want? Yen? You want yuan? You want euro? No, of course not. I don't want that either, but I don't care how lovely we think this is today. That fiat has failed. We may still be treading water due to its you know, reserve currency status, but the world is looking towards a new standard right now. It's coming. The whole discussion that uh, our chairman um, had with uh, the, the world's central banks recently it's coming. It's going to be digital. It's going to be government 
backed, or it's going to be fiat based, and it's going to be uh, it's going to usher in a reset that we all know is coming. That's the first reason. The second reason, I'll, I'll try to speed it up a little bit, is the unprecedented money printing, the government bailouts, the Federal Reserve, the Treasury, the U.S. government. It's like this this triad of some blasphemous economic relationship. It's terrible. The government left and right, both sides of the aisle, guys, wants to continue the orgy of federal spending and handouts. That's right. I called it handouts, aka bailouts. Don't you think for a minute, please, that, and I've heard this, people leave comments occasionally on this. Uh, They say, it's not fair that Wall Street and, and the banksters got their bailouts. I want my bailout. No, no. Money printing and currency handouts are economic suicide, regardless of the recipient. You know, I'm going to say that again. Money printing and currency handouts are economic suicide, regardless of the recipient. That may sound harsh, but it's true. And guys, we need to stop the madness. All right, that's that's two. Number three, again, it's it's the whole global pandemic that we've had and the ripple effects from it. This is just one example, all right? And it is the commercial real estate market. I've spoken to dozens of people that I know who are not going back to their office again, okay? I may not be going back to my office ever. It It's huge, folks. Even if just a small fraction of white collar workers continued working from home for the foreseeable future, that would send shockwaves through the commercial real estate markets. With a large percentage, that's what I'm seeing, that aren't going back, that's complete devastation. And trust me, this is not a short-term aberration. No, I think it's a cultural shift in the way employers uh, run their businesses. I, I think it, it there's some you know there's potentially some 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 benefit to this from hiring standpoint and the, and the ability to work uh, remotely and in this economy that's fine I get that but it is going to clobber the real estate market and that's just one example one example of the ripple effects that I think is going to crush us retail business way down travel and hospitality guys we are at the beginning of this crisis not the end. And I won't even talk about if we actually shut it down again. I I cannot imagine that happening. But anyways, let's talk about the fourth reason. And it's really historic cyclical behaviors with metals. Seasonality of the price of silver and gold. Now, let let me show you this. After the usual doldrums of spring and summer, precious metals traditionally do better during the fall and winter months. Since uh, the 1970s, gold has had strong months in September and October. You can see it right there. Broken down even more between uh, 1973 to 2010, gold's strong months have been October and November. But the time frame between 2001 to 2010 shows that September and November have ruled and, you know, I think the period that includes that stagflationary time of the 70s, <laughs> uh, I think that may be more indicative of, of what's going to happen this time around. That's my guess. But that's gold. How what about silver? Well, during the period between 1975 and 2019, the month of November has only averaged modest gains. However, September has usually been the best And it was anything but that last month. It was bad, down 18%. No, I think the pullback last month and a relatively flat October indicates pent-up demand and a higher-than-likely rise in November. 
And that leads me to the final reason why I think this November is going to be potentially explosive for precious metals, especially the more volatile silver. And that is a disputed U.S. presidential election. Okay, guys, this is a year like no other. And it's almost like the icing on this horrible cake has been that it's an election year. And regardless of who wins on November 3rd, I think the election results are destined for court. That's my opinion. There's little doubt in my mind that a fight is going to ensue. Even if the ballot results are definitive, I think there's going to be a fight. And I think it's going to last a while too. I talked uh, what, about what I think um, uh, silver and gold will do depending on who wins in a prior video right up there. Uh, and I'm not going to go into it in, in much detail here. But one of the options, one of the things that I talk about in there is a contested election. And I think the uncertainty and fear uh, that a disputed election, possibly, you know, it going to all the way up to the Supreme Court, <laughs> I think that would push precious metals up a lot. So there you have it. Those are my five reasons. And what am I doing? Well, this is not enough for Yankee. <laughs> okay, I am buying silver hard over the next two weeks. And I'm curious to know what you are doing. So please leave a comment down below. Do you agree with my assessments? Do you think uh, silver and gold are going to really rock it up in the next 30 days? Thanks again for watching. I hope you really enjoyed it. And as always, I hope your day is A-OK. -okay.